Weaving through traffic, jumping through billboards, smashing through security gates, and exploring an open world may sound familiar to fans of Burnout Paradise. But despite the obvious similarities, this game is not part of the Burnout franchise. This is Need for Speed, Most Wanted. Need for Speed Most Wanted is Criterion's latest effort in what they do best, racing games. Criterion is probably best known for their series of Burnout games, culminating in 2008's open-world racing game Burnout Paradise, but were then handed the keys to the Need for Speed franchise by EA. In 2010, they released Need for Speed Hot Pursuit to much critical acclaim, and for many, this game was a return to form for the failing Need for Speed franchise. With their latest outing, it seems Criterion have combined some of the best parts of its last two games. The high production values and licensed cars of the Need for Speed franchise, and the open world design of Burnout Paradise. The spectacular slow motion crashes that the Burnout games are known for seem to have taken a back seat, however. I guess the car manufacturers didn't like to see their products in a tangled mess of crumpled steel and broken glass. Despite the toned down car gore, I would say Most Wanted is probably still Criterion's best looking game yet. The lighting especially makes everything stand out. At night, the city bathes in the glow of streetlights and neon signs. While during the day, sunlight is subtly reflected on wet tarmac. And less subtly blinds you as you come speeding out of a tunnel at 200 km per hour. Besides the polished visuals, the licensed soundtrack is also worth noting. The game does allow you to skip songs with a touch of the R1 button, but I soon find myself humming along to most of the tunes after playing the game for just a few hours. Unlike other racing games, cars in Most Wanted are not unlocked by winning races or setting record times. Instead, the game gives you access to every car from the start, with the exception of 10 Most Wanted cars that have to be unlocked by beating them in a head-to-head -head race. Winning a race gives you access to mods for your current vehicle, such as tires, acceleration and bodies. There's no cosmetic change to go with these mods, but the difference in performance is staggering and can make a tuned out vehicle feel completely different from the stock model. Going for a lightweight car will make you go faster, but also makes it easier for opponents to take you down. In addition to the standard circuit races and sprint races, Most Wanted also features events called ambushes and speedruns. Speedruns are similar to time attacks, but with one welcome difference. Instead of judging you on the time it takes to complete the course, speedruns are won by maintaining an average speed above a certain limit. Pop quiz, hot shot. There's a bomb on a bus. Once the bus goes 50 miles an hour, the bomb is armed. If it drops below 50, it blows up. Thankfully, dropping below a certain speed in this game only means you'll earn a bronze or silver medal. Ambushes start out with you being chased by the Fairhaven police. Your goal is to lose them as quickly as possible. To achieve this, you can use everything at your disposal. Creating distance, drifting around corners, getting a paint job, switching vehicles, or even turning off your engine and patiently waiting for the cops to give up their chase. Making you feel like Ryan Gosling in one of Drive's less violent scenes. Copy that. 
As the game's title suggests, becoming the Fairhaven Police Department's most wanted is one of the game's main draws. Initiating a police chase can be done by bumping into a patrol wagon, speeding past it or indeed just parking your car in front of it. Uh, High-speed chases can be a nice distraction for those who like to mess around in an open-world setting, but they have a habit of outstaying their welcome. Luckily, you can use the game's Easy Drive menu to jump into a race at any point and end the pursuit. Criterion's racing games have never been known for their realistic controls, and this one is really no exception. Despite being a game in the Need for Speed franchise, the cars handle like you'd expect from a Burnout title. To fans of Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, this will come as no surprise. Another similarity is the use of Autolog, which that game introduced and has been used in every Need for Speed game since. In Most Wanted, Autolog tracks various statistics. Your best time in a race, for example, or your biggest jump through a billboard. These stats are then displayed on a personalized leaderboard for you and your friends, and a GPS-like voice will notify you when a friend has beaten one of your records. Autolog alert. In doing so, Criterion has effectively found a way to eliminate all those strangers who seem to have dedicated their life to reaching the top of online leaderboards. Seeing your friend's face or avatar on the billboard triggers a sense of rivalry that John Doe Noob Killer 696 just can't provide. All in all, Autolog has successfully been designed to be one of the two features that will keep you coming back for more. The other, of course, is online play. Online play, much like in Burnout Paradise, is centered around the idea of exploring the city with other people and showing off your skills at certain landmark locations. Events range from getting the longest drifts and catching the most air, to simply reaching the finish line first, or taking down as many of your opponents as possible. Takedowns are something you'll see a lot of when playing online and not just during specific events. Points are rewarded for ramming your opponents at any given time which, in my experience, leads to a never-ending destruction derby and a constant string of car wrecks. For a game that seems to be focused on speed and exploration, this can become frustrating at points, especially when you prefer to mod your car into a fast and light speed machine when everyone else seems to have modded theirs into a steel-devouring monster truck. It seems Criterion didn't seem too worried about differentiating their Need for Speed game from the Burnout franchise, and have instead stuck with what they're familiar with. The result is a game made with confidence and skill, offering fans something new, with a strong hint of familiarity. So whether you're burnt out on Paradise, or if you're simply feeling the need, this game deserves a spot on your list of Most Wanted.